the next one from current electricity a question related to circuit but not a complex one a slight bit of calculation is required there's the resistive network and that has been fed by an EMF of 16 volt and it says the power consumed by the network is 4 watt the entire network consumes 4 watt of power and we need to calculate the value of R all right let's see this is in parallel so that's going to be 2R this is going to be 4R right and this is 2R so what would be the total resistance? 3R, 7R, 8R is the total resistance. What would be the total power consumed? That's going to be 16 square divided by 8R. And this value is to be equated to 4R. That's only the thing which is asked. Now, it's a simple calculation. You can solve for R. And the correct option that you would be getting is 8 ohm. So, option number 1 would be the correct option for this question. All right, now let's move to the fifth one. The fifth question from wave optics and YDSC, a special case of YDSC whenever we place a slab in front of one of the slits, then we know the central fringe would shift upward or downward depending upon where the slab is placed. The idea is that. So, the slab has refractive index mu, the thickness of the slab is T, and upon placement of the slab, the central fringe shifts by one fringe width, that's a data. And we need to calculate the value of thickness T in terms of all these things, all right? Now, you know that upon placement of a slab in front of any of the slits, the additional path difference created would be mu minus 1 multiplied by t. So, mu minus 1 multiplied by t would be the path difference which is created. And you see that if you want to calculate y, that y would be equals to this much multiplied by d by d. So, this is the shift which is generated because of the placement of the slab. And the question says, this shift is equal to one fringe width. So that's lambda d by d. Therefore, the value of thickness has to be lambda upon mu minus one. Option number four is the correct option for this question. Time to move to the next one. Question number six, related to measuring instrument, and it has something to do with conversion of galvanometer into voltmeter. And we know the concept that is done by adding high value resistance in series. Now let's see what is it about. A galvanometer of resistance 100 ohm has been given. So the galvanometer resistance is there which is 100 ohm. 50 divisions on its scale and has a sensitivity of 20 microampere per division. So I think with the help of this data, I can calculate the range of the galvanometer. By range, we mean to say the current required for full scale deflection. Let me do that. I can do it very easily in this way. If I denote it by IG, the current required for full scale deflection, and that's quite simple, see? 20 multiplied by 50 because this many divisions and this is the microampere per division. So that's 1000 microampere. You can convert it into ampere. Now, this galvanometer is to be converted into a voltmeter with three ranges 0 to 2, 0 to 10, and 0 to 20. That means you need to convert this galvanometer into voltmeter of the ranges 2. 10 and 20 respectively. Let's see, in the first case, see, to convert to 2 volt, 10 volt, 20 volt voltmeter, you have resistances R1, R2, R3. Like say the galvanometer in series with R1, then in series with R1 plus R2, then in series with 3. So these are the three cases which is given here and we need to find out 
that width of the given value is consistent with the fact that you want to increase the voltmeter of that given value. So the figure should not scare you. It's quite a simple one, okay? So the first thing, see, if I want to go with the two volt, let me write it here. Two volt will be Ig multiplied by galvanometer resistance plus of R1. Now, galvanometer resistance is known, Ig is known, you can calculate R1. Likewise, if you want to convert it into 10 volt, that means this much will be for the 10 volt. So what we can go, 10 is Ig into Rg plus R1 plus R2. And likewise for 20, 20 would be the entire one, where all the three registers and of course the galvanometer register would be included. So there I get 20 will be equals to Ig into Rg plus R1 plus R2 plus R3, okay? So here I have Rg, R1, R2, R3, all these things, and from these equations we can calculate the value. That is all I require. And on the basis of all this calculation, you can do that. Option number one will match the required data. So for question number six, the correct option is option number one. Let's move to the seventh one.